Hi everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. My name is Rebecca Lee and I am the online services coordinator here at Access Employment. And I just wanted just to welcome all of you for joining us today. And our webinar is called Build a Successful Career in Finance at Canada's Largest Bank, RBC. With me today, as you can see, these are all of our guest speakers here. We have Rati, Vivian, Lavanya, Sharon, and Leanne here today. And those of you that are joining us for the very first time, I just want to say a really warm welcome and, from, and thank you for logging in from all over the world. Access Employment has been around for over 30 years and um, we have been providing services and programs to job seekers as well as new Canadians. We have established relationships with 2,000 plus employers across multiple sectors and industries in Canada. We also deliver a variety of sector specific programs as well, communications training and mentoring programs to our job seekers. We also deliver online services which is something that is more recent, such as the webinar that you are currently attending right now to both our pre-arrival job seekers approved to land in Canada, newcomers across Canada, as well as job seekers in general that are located across the greater Toronto area and in Canada as well. We, that's a little bit about us. And I will be sharing a little bit more about access later on in this webinar as well if anyone's interested in any of our programs and services. So for the agenda for today's webinar with RBC, we will be discussing about career paths in finance and the role finance plays in RBC. RBC employees will also be sharing their personal career journey and any advice that they have for you in building a successful career in the finance world. And then we'll end with a Q&A session. So without further ado, I'm going to be passing this off to our first uh, facilitator, and that'll be Vivian Lee. Hey, hello everyone. My name is Vivian Lee. Hello, can you see me? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm the senior manager of uh, RBC's inclusive recruitment team. Uh, my team is dedicated to help individuals from diverse communities to uh, that face employment degrees uh, launch their career with RBC. So I am an immigrant myself. As an immigrant, I um, understand the challenges um, that all uh, newcomer job seekers face uh, because of lack of networking, the language barrier, the culture barrier. So I'm very glad today to have the opportunity to facilitate the discussion with my HR colleagues and the finance uh, colleagues on job searching tips and advice uh, in the finance world. Um, uh, uh, first of all, for those of you who join our RBC webinar series for the first time, I'd like to uh, provide a little bit of information about RBC, um, who we are as a company, and our commitment to newcomer talent. RBC is Canada's largest bank, and one of the largest banks in the world, based on market capitalization. We have over 80,000 full-time and part-time employees who serve more than 16 million personal, business, public sector, institutional clients through offices in Canada, US, and 36 other countries. Next slide, please. RBC, um, you know, at RBC, diversity and inclusion is a key enabler to uh, in bringing to life RBC's purpose of helping clients thrive and the communities prosper. And it helps us better serve and meet the needs of our increasingly diverse client market. One of our uh, guiding uh, principles for hiring is to hire from the community to serve the community. We help our clients in over 200 languages. Our workforce has a 30% has 33% um, uh, uh, of visible minorities, and majority of them are either first or second generation immigrants. We leverage the diversity of our workforce as the asset that is competitive advantage in the marketplace. Immigrant employees bring with them their unique culture acumen and international experience. This allows us to excel not only in Canada, but also in the global market. With a large representation of immigrants in our workforce, we have a strategic focus in recent years in, uh, in developing our immigrant employees into senior leadership roles. We also have an employee resource group called Mosaic that helps immigrant employees build leadership skills as well as provide um, 
the networking and a mentorship opportunity within the organization. We also have our annual diversity and inclusion festivals where employees from all backgrounds come together to celebrate our diverse cultures at RBC. Uh, today, I invited two of my HR colleagues, Sharon and Lavanya, to talk about roles and a career path in finance. I'd like to thank them for their time and effort uh, they have put into developing uh, this very informative presentation uh, they're delivering today. Without further ado, um, I will pass the floor to Sharon and Lavanya to briefly introduce themselves first and tell us about the fabulous finance world. Sharon, I will pass it on to you first. Oh. Well, first of all, I just want to thank Access and Vivian for inviting me today. I've been an employee with RBC for over 15 years, but I've supported Access for over 10 employment. Um, I've started my career at RBC in the branch role, so I started as a salesperson and has moved my way up uh, through HR. So I've done different roles such as recruitment, diversity, training, and now I'm in, uh, in CFO supporting them as an associate HR VP. And one of my main goals is to help them execute on their people strategy. Thanks, Sharon. And uh, how about you, Lavanya? Can you tell us a little bit about you? Sure. So first, uh, at the outset, again, I thank Vivian and Access for inviting me to this webinar. And I'm also very happy to be here to talk with my colleagues about the opportunities within the CFO group at RBC. So I'm a senior recruiter at RBC who supports the CFO group and a couple of other groups like audit, tax, corporate treasury, and investor relations. And prior to supporting these groups, I supported technology and operations, and I've been with RBC for about more than six years. Uh, I'm very happy to say that I'm a I'm a first generation landed immigrant and started off my first job in RBC as a career at intern. So most of my HR colleagues in the diversity team calls me the golden child of uh, <laughs> And uh, from then on, um, I've been in various diversity councils within RBC as well as a triac mentor. And I've also, and again, RBC is a great place for growth and development, which fosters a lot of diversity and inclusion in their core values. Thanks, Lavanya. So um, um, I'd like to pass it back to Sharon and tell us a little bit about our finance world. Okay, thank you, Vivian. So our finance world, there are actually seven businesses under CFO. And however, we're only going to be focused on the finance section. So that covers six groups. And the six groups are wholesale and in investor and treasury services finance, personal and commercial banking, technology and operation, functions finance, finance and controller, taxation, performance management, investor relations, enterprise decision support, and corporate treasury. The CFO group is a team of specialized professionals that provide sound financial governance and advice to internal business partners and external stakeholders. Financial governance is provided through financial reporting, finance and accounting, policy enforcement, and risk mitigation activity. CFO provides business value creation and advice through planning, analysis, and best-in-class performance measurement. When we look at the state mission statement of CFO, it says to enable RBC to help clients thrive in communities proper through value governments and advice. So what does that mean? How are they going to achieve this goal? Well, they want to partner to drive business results, which basically means they want to help the business make the right decision by providing financial advice. Optimize finance operating model. So it, that relates back to collaboration and working with different centers of expertise across the bank, not just with your own team and at people at different levels. And flawless control environment focuses on mitigating risk and leveraging technology to ensure we are focused on providing value to the business versus just pulling reports. And at the same time, they focus on a highly engaged employee workforce. What that means is they want a creative culture of inclusion for people to voice their opinion and challenges ideas. You can move to the next slide. The next slide is the overview of the CFO vision. 
The overview is basically aligned to the overview I just gave you on the first page. So if you are able to understand the CFO mission, vision, and values, you probably have a good idea of what skills, capabilities, and experiences of what CFO is looking for when they are hiring employees. I'm going to turn it over to Lavania to share what you will need to succeed in CFO and the recruitment process. Great. Thanks, Shen. So I would like to start with uh, what are the roles and opportunities that open within the CFO group and uh, talk a little bit about these uh, roles and what kind of skills we look for when we hire uh, finance professionals. So some of the opportunities that are posted are uh, finance advisors, senior finance advisors. So to Sharon's point, as she mentioned, the different, the different functional groups within finance, there are roles that are split across these groups for analytics, for, for, for capital markets, for personal and commercial banking, technology and operations, as well as performance, management, investor relations, and various other groups. So what are these opportunities all about? So this is where we have finance professionals to support different platforms within the enterprise, where they provide financial advice, governance, and support the different businesses. They partner very closely with different uh, business platform business partners in managing their costs, planning, forecasting their finances, and the execution of financial control. And uh, these roles are very uh, analytical and consultative in nature, where there's a lot of uh, relationship management and other skills that and capabilities that are required, as well as exposure to compliance and governance governance and now since the IFR is a big thing we are also looking for people with IFRS experience as well as a number of these roles provide candidates or employees an opportunity to work on ad hoc projects and uh, trans with change and transformation they have a lot of opportunity to learn, learn and grow into different other roles. Next slide please. So what do you need to succeed on these roles? The, the skills and capabilities that we basically look for to succeed in these roles are strong communication, both verbal and written, where it's able to express uh, your presentations or findings to senior management as well confidently. With, from a technical skill pers perspective, we look for good finance and accounting experience, uh, either from the financial industry or from the big four consulting firms. We also look for uh, advanced Excel and reporting skills because the roles are heavily analytical in nature as well as a strong attention to detail and uh, problem solving. And then because again it supports various businesses, we do look for individuals who have good business acumen and platform knowledge for what the role asks for as well as the ability to impact and influence the businesses with uh, their advice and the counsel they provide. Uh, key, key stakeholder management and relationship skills is a big one because the, again it's a partnership and all these roles ask for a lot of con collaboration and interpersonal skills as well as from an education perspective uh, the preference is for a university degree or an MBA as well as a CA or CPA designation because most roles are highly dependent on using all these analytical and financial reporting skills which are commonly associated with these accounting designations. Uh, I'm going to pass it on to Sharon. Uh, sorry, uh, just to walk you, to give you a brief uh, walk through the recruitment uh, process map and how the whole recruitment process works. All our jobs are posted on the RPC career website, both internally and externally, as well as it's posted on different job boards like LinkedIn, Workapolis, Monster, Work and uh, other job boards. So it's routed to all these job boards to cast a wide net. And the postings are typically posted for two weeks where we uh, entertain in both internal and external applications. Once the posting comes down, we begin the shortlisting process where we uh, shortlist individuals based on the capabilities and skills that the role asks for and begin with interviews. So there could be an in initial HR interview followed by technical interviews with the hiring team and uh, finalized candidates. Once the candidates finalized, it's the background checks 
process which takes about five to seven days and then the onboarding process. So as a whole, if you see the recruitment cycle, it would be, uh, it would take about 30 to 45 days to fill a role in an ideal scenario. I'm passing it over to Sharon to talk about the other uh, roles within CFO group and what kind of capabilities we look for to kind of expand and diversify your portfolio. Thank you, Lavania. So I wanted to highlight three capabilities that the CFO group looks for in all candidates and employees to demonstrate at RBC. I will be using the term capability and skills interchangeably throughout my presentation. I believe capabilities are just as important as technical skills, and I also believe that you actually have these skills and you just are may not be sure on how to showcase them on your resume or during an interview. So the reason why capabilities are identified is because the world of work is changing, not just for RBC, but for all companies. If we plan to live up to our RBC purpose, which is helping clients thrive and communities prosper, we need to be competitive in the market. I use the words transferable because if you are able to demonstrate these skills in one role, this will make you marketable to other businesses in the bank, and which means you can have the option of not just building your career within finance, but in other areas at RBC. So let's overview the first one, advisor. So what is an advisor? Someone who does not just present numbers, but is able to present insights and recommendations. So for example, if you're a financial analyst for HR and you're reviewing the budget with HR, don't just present the numbers. If you know they've gone over the budget, you know, the expectation is, is that you provide them with advice on how to save money and, and point out the gaps, other gaps that they have. The second one is business acronym. Why is this important? Well, in order to provide great advice, you need to understand the business that you serve. You need to be proactive to meet your business partner's need, and you need to utilize the understanding of the internal and external market. So in order for us to be competitive and have good business acumen, it also means that you, you want to maintain RBC's competitive advantage. And that means you have to understand what our competitors are doing, how can we differentiate ourselves in the market, and identify any new opportunities that we can leverage. The other thing about business acumen is delivering an exceptional client experience. So if you are able to understand and anticipate any of the client's needs, you've already exceeded their expectation, and you, which in turn will be able to provide a simpler, faster, better service and advice to, our client, to your client. The last one is take accountability. Think of yourself as an entrepreneur, a business owner. You would take full responsibilities for all the decisions you made and ensure the output of your work is accurate and detailed. Ensure your clients are happy and see you as a valued partner. So take ownership of your work and be a leader. So being a leader at RBC does not mean you have just have a management title. It means that you understand the business needs, you go above and beyond for your clients, you look for opportunity to improve, uh, to improve processes, you speak up and challenge ideas, and, um, and you help RBC win through collaborations with your partners. You can change to the next slide. So, careers at RBC. So, if you are able to demonstrate the skills and capabilities and paired up with the technical skills and work experience, you are probably able to transfer your skills and grow career within finance. So, within finance meaning you can go from an accounting role in finance to finance and controller to product control, maybe to tax, maybe to corporate treasury. So you can build a full career in finance and that's fine. But just know if you have these capabilities, you can also be competitive outside of finance at RBC. So potentially you could move into roles in group risk management, internal audit, personal commercial banking. And we've seen some really good successful stories. So example is in personal and commercial banking, they have sales roles. And a lot of what we have a big commercial clientele. So we're always looking for people with not only sales skills, but a, fine, a good financial background that can actually review financial statements with the clients and also provide them advice at the same time. You will notice that many of our branch managers uh, or commercial bankings transition in and out of finance. You may think internal audit. 
RBC hires a lot of people with an audit background. And I would say no longer is audit just going into the business, telling them what they need to improve on and leaving. They too are looking for those capabilities around business acumen, being a good advisor, and the third one. Um, and the other one is group risk management. There are various roles that you know people can get into, whether it's in compliance or risk roles. So on that right now, I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues, um, Leanne and Ratti, to talk about their experience and career journey at RBC. Uh, thanks, Sharon, um, and Alemania for the great information you have shared. I have definitely personally learned a lot about the finance world, and I'm sure that our job seekers have as well. Uh, so uh, like Sharon mentioned, in addition to um, my HR colleagues, I have invited two senior leaders in our RBC Finance to share their career journey in finance, uh, Leanne and Patty. Both of them have very unique perspectives, and I'm looking forward to hearing their stories. I will start with you, Lian. Uh, can you briefly introduce yourself, your career journey in finance? Sure, thanks for the introduction. My name is Leanne Bowden, and I have been with RBC for three years. I'll give you a little bit about my background first prior to joining RBC. After graduating from university, I joined KPMG, which is a public accounting firm, and I spent two and a half years in audit and two and a half years in tax. So as was mentioned previously, the concept of auditing, but I audited a variety of different types of clients, both public companies and smaller owner-managed businesses as well. When I was in tax, I provided tax advice to owner-managed businesses, so I did not work on the public side for tax clients. I then decided that I wanted to make a career transition, and I went back to school to complete my MBA. I did that here in Canada as well. From MBA, I was recruited to join RBC through a program called the Financial Management Development Program. And that is where I started with, the, with RBC three years ago. I was very fortunate to join this program because it offered me the ability to try four different finance roles within two years. So as the overview was provided previously by Sharon, how RBC is structured in the portfolio of the CFO, this program afforded me the opportunity to select four different roles within that space in two years. So I held four roles. The first was in the INTS platform on the performance management team. The second was in the Canadian banking platform on the credit cards finance advisory team. And for the final two, I had the opportunity to work overseas in Sydney, Australia for six months on the capital markets financial control team and Hong Kong for six months on the finance change management team. So I realize that's a lot of information all at once, but what you can take away from that is that in two years, I had the chance to experience four different roles within the finance function of RBC. Since coming back to Canada in September, I have joined the PNCB platform full-time, and I'm a senior manager in finance supporting business financial services. So what do all of these roles mean, and how has my CPA designation and MBA background helped me here at RBC? I really liked earlier in the presentation when we discussed the importance of transferable skills. When I worked at KPMG, I really learned the value of teamwork, collaboration, and work ethic. And I think that the ability to transfer those skill sets to a new organization has really set me up for su success here at RBC. So when considering advice to offer newcomers to Canada or to the organization, I suggest considering the skill set that you have and how you can transfer that to an organization like RBC. The entire presentation is geared towards helping you frame how those skills can be transferred and where in the organization those skills could be a benefit. The MBA was also a unique experience that helped me get a more rounded view. So coming from public accounting, where my focus was primarily tax and audit, I wanted to round out my ability as a financial advisor, which was also mentioned as a transferable skill. 
So in my current role, I'm a financial advisor to the business. I also really like Sharon's example of when you're presenting the budget to someone and there's a gap in the analysis, the business or your partner is looking for you to explain why. So taking a very recent and real example, the Bank of Canada just increased the interest rate for the first time in seven years. Those of you outside of Canada might not be overly familiar with the Canadian economy right now, which is more than okay, but this was a very significant event in the Canadian economy and, of course, for RBC. From a finance perspective here in PNCB and in my current role, we did a considerable amount of sensitivity analysis to present to our business partner the what does this mean to me. And that's where I really felt that here in finance we can add value beyond just speaking to what the numbers are, but helping the business to understand some of the macroeconomic factors and the impacts for them and how they run their portfolio here within the business. I think that was a summary that I had prepared. Vivian, I'm not sure if we want to do a bit of a question and answer between the two of us or where we should go from here. <laughs> Thanks, Leanne. I, I know I'm so happy you are on the um, on the conference with us today because in my uh, experience, doing you know helping newcomers, uh, one uh, a few questions actually I constantly get asked if, um, you know about is whether accounting designation would add value and whether I need to is it um, you know worthwhile for me to uh, go to MBA because it's kind of expensive, right? So you kind of touch on both of them, um, you know. Um, I don't know whether you have anything to elaborate on, uh, you know, um, if not, there, I'm sure there will be a lot of questions at our Q&A section and uh, we can uh, redirect, uh, we can direct the questions to you at that time. Sure, I'm happy to add a little bit more color around my thoughts on having the accounting designation and how that has impacted my career at RBC so far. So in the program that I joined the bank through, which is called the Financial Management Development Program, that first of all is only available to those completing an MBA. So completing the MBA is what opened that path for me. And in that program, it's geared towards individuals who are looking for or looking to start or continue their career in finance. And an accounting designation is not directly required. However, I did have my CPA, CA designation when I joined the program, which I truly feel gave me a competitive advantage over some of my peers. So for those of you who are currently completing or have already completed an accounting designation, I do believe that that's a valued asset here within RBC and can help differentiate yourself from those who are also considering joining the bank. If it's something that you do not have, there are opportunities within the bank for those who do not have a designation but in order to have broader access to the roles and to differentiate yourself, I have found that the having the designation has been very helpful. With respect to the MBA, I think this is more of a unique identifier in finance. I have not come across as many individuals within finance that have an MBA. I do hope as I continue to progress throughout my career at RBC that the MBA will continue to set me apart from others. But when we're focusing on finance, I think the importance of a finance designation over an MBA would likely be preferred. Thank you, Leanne. That's very helpful. Um, you know, as I mentioned, I do get asked a lot of questions on those two topics, and uh, I hope the uh, the audience uh, can you know uh, learn something and some great information. And uh, feel free to ask questions in our Q and A section if you have further questions for Leanne. Uh, now I'm going to pass it on to Raddy. Can you give us a brief introduction about yourself and your career in finance, and, uh, both outside and inside RBC? Hello, I'm Ruthie Guitar, uh, and thank you, first of all, Vivian and Access for bringing me on. Love to have this opportunity and share my experiences. Um, I have a finance designation from India. I did one in the U.S and then came into Canada. So I do have a bit of a flavor of everybody, or at least three countries. Coming into Canada, I've been here for working for about 15 years, worked in different groups. I've worked in a hospital foundation. I worked in a medical technology company and a construction company before joining RBC. And even within RBC, I've held a variety of roles. I think I'll touch on that as I start speaking about other things. Currently, I'm a director of finance and I'm a I support technology infrastructure. 
right now, given the mantra, technology is everything. And I'm really, I've been in this role, this particular role for two months, but before that I've been supporting technology for the past two and a half years. And I've loved every moment of it. It is so interesting. And by the way, I have no technology background. I'm a finance professional and yet interacting with my technology partners has been a great experience. So as I was thinking about my experience, for the past 15 years and again I'm just like uh, Lavanya mentioned I'm also first I'm an immigrant here I've been here in this country for 15 years it's just as I've learned through my career the first thing has always been just be open and flexible to your opportunities when I started looking for a role the first role that came to me was a two-week contract in the hospital foundation I had no experience of hospitals but they were open to taking me on and that's what started my career here it's easy to say it's a two-week contract, but that contract led to more work within the hospital foundation, and that's where I was able to leverage myself and go into different other roles. And then when we look at RBC, in RBC, I started out as a financial advisor supporting credit cards, moved on within operations business, managing, so reporting on their KPIs. I came back into finance, supporting technology. I still am doing that. This is my fourth role within RBC. So when we say be open and flexible to opportunities, just, just look around. Don't just be focused on this is the only thing I want to do and this is the only thing I will take on. Any opportunity that should comes your way, look at it. Try to see if you can fit into it or, or see if that will help you in your career path. Sometimes your career path is just not linear. You tend to, to take on roles which are uh, uh, the same level or, or probably sometimes even a lower level. That's fine if it helps you grow, if it helps you learn. I would take that opportunity happily. Another thing that I found very interesting, um, I didn't find this so much back home in India, but when I've, as I've come into Canada and as I've learned about the work culture here, it's its really key to build your network. And network doesn't mean just building, um, it's not just a pure professional network. There are lots of opportunities to build your network. You could go out, you could be volunteering, you could go out and, and take some courses that would help you reach out to different people. And even even take on some temporary work that, that's not in your line, but at least it would help you get to talk to different people learn what's happening outside in the marketplace. And again, so, so just again, touch back on my own experience. I knew somebody who worked within RBC and they knew that someone within their team was looking for a person. I handed in my resume to them and that's how I got in. And it's so true when you see so many of these career web websites or so many of the publications talking about a lot of the jobs never even get posted online or, or anywhere they publish because before they get published there are other people who have built their network talked to different people and gotten a role or at least gotten an interview that's the first thing actually another thing that i find here uh, as we do our designations I, I love the fact that in our designation it's mandatory to do certain courses or complete certain hours of uh, learning throughout the year Every year we have to complete those hours. To me personally, that helps me stay current. And even, it's not just current with my subject matter, but it's also current with uh, what, what's happening outside in the market. When, we, when people talk about technology, how are they leveraging that in finance or accounting? What are they doing over there? So it's not just, uh, to me, even though I did my CPA or CGA about 15 years ago, every year I've done courses, even an RBC again, thanks to RBC, where we get so many opportunities to attend different seminars, work through different courses. It's, it's again, going back to RBC because we're focused here on RBC as an organization. It's been a great learning experience for me. I've grown in this organization and this organization has supported me in just just given me different opportunities they're so open as I think I think it was Sharon who had mentioned that it's not just that you have to stay within finance you can always go out go out to a different pillar be a salesperson for a while be in branch uh, 
and come back into finance if that's what you want to do. And I know I have colleagues here who worked for a number of years in finance and then gone out and they are truly enjoying their sales experiences or, or some are working as, um, actually I have one who works as a project, project manager now and he totally enjoys it. But he always again leverages his finance background because again the, the, the structured methodology that we learn here and in trying to make sure that we are partners and advisors, that helps us through each and every different career within RBC. That's all I have. Absolutely. Thanks, Rati. I definitely echo, you know, there are two key points I want to just re reiterate that Rati touched on that are so important. One is, you know, about this notion of a career path, right? So career path is not a linear path. So we think about it from career map perspective, any opportunity that can, you know, help you grow and develop be open to those opportunities and build, uh, you know, you have a vision and what uh, what opportunity you can take on to achieve your vision that, you know, that's definitely something you should be open to. And uh, another point is about the importance of network. As Raji was mentioning how important network is, um, I assume some newcomers might or even pre-arrival, uh, you know, audience might be thinking, I don't have a network in Canada, how can I start? We actually did a very, um, you know, extensive uh, session on how to network and how to do job searching in one of our previous uh, webinars. Please do go to Access website and search um, our previous webinar. You will have a lot of useful tips uh, from that webinar. Um, so I think at this point, we're, you know, we, uh, Rebecca must have received a lot of uh, questions from the audience. I'll pass it by, back to Rebecca to start our Q&A. Thank you so much, Vivian. Going on to our next slide here, you'll see this is our online job search center. So for those of you that are joining us for the first time, this is where we're hosting a lot of our past webinars from Access Employment, as well as our webinars with RBC as well. So if you're looking to watch something that you had missed before, feel free to browse through our resources. We also have quizzes, we also have um, articles as well, a number of resources for you to help you find your first job in Canada. We also have an upcoming webinar with RBC on August 10th, and that would be at 11 a.m. Eastern standard time and our RBC HR team and access employment staff aka myself will be discussing about common interview questions asked in Canada, how to prepare for the different interview stages and also tips on standing out from other candidates as a newcomer professional. So if you are looking for additional interview tips, please join our webinar and you can register for all of our upcoming webinars on the link here, accessemployment.ca slash online event series. And I'm just going to pass this over to Vivian just to talk a little bit more about the Newcomer to Canada website. Thanks, Rebecca. So if you are interested in a career and jobs at RBC, we do invite you to visit our new job site, jobs.rbc.com. Um, you know, I'm sure there are a lot of fabulous uh, uh, opportunities at RBC that you will be interested in. Also, we'd uh, like to invite you to visit our RBC newcomer site, Newcomers to Canada. There are a lot of great information so from opening your first account, bank account, buying your first home, and uh, and how to find your you know job opportunities like their web uh, access. Um, uh, webinar series there. Uh, there's also a great newcomers package that we offer uh, to you, so please do check uh, RBC's newcomer website. Uh, if you Google newcomers to Canada, um, RBC, you'll find that site. Okay. Thank you so much, Vivian. Well, the next step is really just to stay in touch with us. We have a number of upcoming webinars with RBC as well as about other volunteers as well here at Access Employment. So stay tuned with us through Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook as well. And I will also be sharing a copy of this presentation as a number of you have been requesting that. So after the webinar, I will be sharing a copy of recording as well as some of the resources that we discussed during this webinar as well. So I just wanted to thank you for your participation. I want to thank you RBC as well just for such an informative webinar and for answering all of our Q&As. Thank you everyone and all the best.